Hi, this is Jack, and my project is about the 3D audio simulation. Let's recap. The goal of the project is to simulate what an audio sample would sound like in a virtual 3D environment. The way the project works is it uses a ray tracer to find all the audio rays that come out of a sound source, bounce off of objects in a 3D scene, and reach the listener. For each of the rays, the program generates an audio response according to the direction of that ray. All of the audio responses are then added together, normalized to fit the allowed range of values for audio, i.e. from negative 1 to 1. There are three parts to discuss in this project. The ray tracing process, the audio generation process, and the testing process. For the ray tracing process, I use a 3D modeling software called Blender that has a built-in ray trace renderer. The rendered image is in the form of an equirectangular projection. This form of projection is also the most common form of world map projection that we're familiar with. The X coordinate represents the longitude of the projection and the Y coordinate represents the latitude. I use the red channel of each pixel to encode how much contribution the low frequencies have on the ray. On the other hand, the green channel carries the factor of the high frequencies. The frequency separating the low and the high frequencies of the audio is 600 Hz. The range of each of the color channels is normalized to be from 0 to 1. Every time a ray bounces off of a surface, its color is multiplied with the color of the surface, and the more the ray bounces, the darker the color of the ray gets. This works perfectly in our favor since this fits the idea that the more the sound gets reflected, the quieter it gets. The blue channel in this case encodes the total distance the ray has traveled before it hits the sound source. Here's what a normal 3D scene looks like. Here's the same scene, but it's made only for audio. You can see that if a material is more red, it reflects more low frequency than high frequencies, whereas if a material is green, it reflects more of the higher frequencies. For the audio generation process, there are two parts to discuss. One is audio preparation, and the other is the directional audio simulation, more formally known as audio localization. To prepare the audio, I first take the Fourier transform of the audio sample that I want to simulate. In this case, it's the sound of a coin dropping on the table. Then I generate a coefficient curve that are all 1's before 600 Hz and fall off to 0 after. Multiplying the coefficients with the frequency domain of the audio sample gives me the low end of the sound. Similarly, multiplying 1 minus the coefficients with it gives me the high end. I keep these two frequency bands separate and mix them together when I generate the sound for the rays based on the color of that ray. For the localization, I use a database for head-related impulse responses from a company called IRCAM from France. The head-related impulse responses are recorded by placing high-quality microphones into each ear of a dummy head and move a uniform sound source around the head. The recorded stereo audio responses are then paired with the direction they come from in the form of latitude and longitude. These responses store the three key principles to humans' ability to localize sound. Interaural level difference or the difference in volume between two ears. Interaural time difference or the difference in arrival time to each ear. And the timbre difference between the two ears. If we divide the frequency domain of these responses by the frequency domain of the original sound that is played to the dummy head, we will get the head-related transfer function or HRTF. If we multiply one HRTF by the frequency domain of the audio sample that we have, we will get the directional stereo sound with the projection direction that we picked the HRTF by. There's a small problem with the image we rendered though. The audio rays have a much higher chance of hitting the audio source directly rather than bouncing off of other surfaces than hit the audio source. The result is a much higher concentration of direct audio than reflected audio. To correct the distribution, I needed to resample the audio rays in favor of the reflected rays. How much the reflected rays are favored is controlled by a parameter called wetness, 
I swear I did not make that term up. In audio processing, the wetness of a sound refers to the amount of reverberation applied to the audio sample. The HRTF from the database I use does a very good job of creating sounds coming from behind the listener, but it doesn't work as well when the audio comes from the front. Believe me, I tested all 4 to 5 of them. Since the performance of the program is entirely subjective, there isn't a trivial way to test it. The testing method I chose to go with is conducting a small survey. In this survey, I created five scenarios. In the first scenario, the coin drops on the table in front of the listener. In the second scenario, the coin drops behind and to the left of the listener. In the third scenario, the coin drops behind to the right and slightly above the listener. In the fourth scenario, the audio comes from behind the couch which obscures the audio source. And in the fifth scenario, the audio source is in the same location as the first scenario, but the room is four times bigger. For each of the scenarios, there's one question about the accuracy of the audio and another one about the audio quality. I was able to collect 13 responses. Given how socially unpopular I am, this is a very impressive number. As expected, the scenarios where the audio source comes from the front have the most inconsistent result. In scenario 1, 4, and 5, most people cannot tell where the audio comes from. In scenarios 2 and 3, where the audio source is behind the listener, most people can immediately pinpoint the location of the sound source. Most people say that the audio is realistic in all scenarios except for the fourth one where the coin is behind the couch and the fifth one where the room is four times bigger. All in all, I think this project is a success. The original idea that I had for the project is fully carried out. The only thing I need now is a better HRTF database and a more robustly built program instead of MATLAB codes. Thanks for watching and here are my sources.